In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a setup like this, where a microphone is moving on a stage, and a rope, or the microphone wire is naturally trailing behind it. This tutorial was requested by one of our viewers, and it's a good example of how we can apply cloth simulation for something that is not a cloth. And this technique can be used in many other scenarios as well, so it is worth watching, even if you are not creating this exact same scene. We'll start with a blank scene, and we'll use this default cube as our mouthpiece. Let us resize it by a factor of 0.2, and then move it aside for the time being like this. Now, go to the Add menu, and add a Bezier curve. We can enlarge it by a factor of 3. This will form the body of our rope or the wire. For a better orientation, let us rotate it by around 90 degrees, around the x-axis. And we'll also change its y-rotation angle, like this. If you want to further edit this curve, now is the time to do that in the edit mode. You can extrude it for example, as per your requirement. Once the edit is final and complete, go to this curve tab. Then scroll down and expand this geometry section. Under the bevel section, we have to enter a small value in the depth field, say 0.004. You can use a higher value for a rope, but for this microphone wire, it is just perfect. And don't worry about these sharp bends, we'll easily rectify them later. Now press 1 on your keyboard to go to the front view mode. We have to move this curve upward, so that it stays above the ground plane, and it does not cut through the floor. Now, we have to place this cube, right at the tip of this curve, so let us move it here. You don't need to be very perfect at this point, we'll later replace this cube with a real microphone. At that time, we can place it precisely. So till now, we have created a curve, and a cube attached to it. Now select the curve, then go to the object menu, and under convert, select the mesh option. The curve will be converted into a mesh. We need to create a link between this cube, or the microphone, and the curve or the wire that will trail behind it, so let us go to the edit mode. For the time being, we can hide the cube object. Now select the vertices at the top end, and zoom in, we have to ensure that all these vertices are selected, or just select them again. Now we'll add them into a vertex group, so go to this object data properties tab. Then create a new vertex group, and click on assign. So these selected vertices will be assigned to this vertex group. While these vertices are still selected, we have to unhide our cube. Now press the control key, and select the cube. It will get highlighted in a red color. Then go to the vertex menu. Come down to the hook option, and select the option called, hook to selected object. Now we can go back to the object mode. Since the wire is now hooked to the cube, if you move this cube to any location, the wire will extend itself and remain attached to the cube. Let us undo the movement of the cube. In the next step, we'll add a cloth physics to this wire, in order to convert it to a flexible object that can hang from the microphone. So go to the physics tab, and enable the cloth physics from here. We'll go with all these default values over here, but scroll down, and expand the shape section. Then, in this pin group, we have to select the same vertex group that we have created a while back for the wire. Then select this cube. If you now start the simulation, the wire will fall down like this. Now press the G key and move your mouse, the cube will move along with the wire behind it. This is how we can create a trailing wire, or a rope, hanging from some moving object. Let us go to the first frame. Now select the wire, and go to the modifiers tab. We can see a modifier called hook modifier, it was created when we hooked the wire to the cube object. And this cloth modifier is created by Blender, because we have added a cloth physics for this. Please remember that their sequence is important, this cloth modifier should go after the hook modifier, otherwise it won't work correctly. And to convert these sharp bends into a smooth profile, let us add a subdivision surface modifier. We need to use the Catmull Plark option, and the levels can be 2, or 3. Now, we'll add a rectangular plane, which will work as a floor. The extra part of the wire will fall back and gather on that floor. So let us add a plane into our scene. We'll enlarge it by a factor of 5. Now go to the Physics tab, and enable the Collision Physics for this. We have to then increase the friction value, maybe to 50. Now select the wire. In the cloth properties, we'll change the vertex mass to say 2, so that we have a heavier material and little less movement in the air. Now scroll down through all these sections, and expand the section for collisions. Under this, 
We have to enable this self collisions. We'll increase this friction value to 50 as well. And we have to use a very small value in this distance field, like 0.001, because the collision distance is a fraction of the thickness of this wire. If you now run this, the rope will fall back and rest on this platform. And like before, you can grab the cube and move it, along with the wire. You'll notice that this time the movement is little slower, because this time, the calculations must include the collisions as well, and it is happening real-time, not from the cache. So every time you have to clear the cache in the cloth simulation, if it does not work at your end. But this real-time movement is just for testing, we'll plan the actual movement of the microphone beforehand, and create suitable keyframes. But before that let us first replace this default cube with a real microphone. So we have now replaced the cube with this microphone. This simple microphone is modeled by ourselves, and we have already published a tutorial last week on how to model this. The link is given below in the video description, because if you are creating this scene, you'll need a microphone as well. Our cube is still there, and we'll delete it, but let us first select the wire, and then go to the modifiers tab. Here, if you expand the hook modifier, you'll see that the cube is still present in the target object. So let us remove this, and in its place, we have to pick up the microphone as the target. Now we can delete our cube. In the next step, we'll animate the microphone across some frames, and we'll keyframe its locations. Then we need to bake the cloth physics for the wire, to make it final. Let us leave the first 50 frames for the wire, to settle down on this platform, or the floor. So our animation should start from frame 50. And we'll run it say till frame number 400. Let us go to frame number 50. We'll keyframe the current location values for the microphone, so in the object properties, press the I key on your keyboard, while the mouse is over these fields, a keyframe will be added. We'll then go to frame 100. And let's enable the auto keyframe from here. Now, we need to move the microphone to another location, maybe like this. And Blender will automatically keyframe these locations. Similarly, let's go to another frame, say 200. And we'll again move the microphone. We can fast forward this. Auto keyframe is a nice feature. If you are not familiar with this, we have a tutorial exclusively on auto keyframe. This link is also given below. Now, we need to bake the cloth physics for the wire. No need to worry about the current state of the wire. It will get rectified once the physics is baked. So scroll down in this physics tab and expand this cache section. Here, the simulation start frame should always be frame 1, although it does not match with our animation start frame. That is because the first 50 frames are there for the wire to settle down on the ground floor, so bake it from frame 1. And this end frame should match with our animation end frame. Now delete all the bakes and bake the physics again. Once this is complete, let us run it from the beginning. We can see that the wire is nicely trailing behind the microphone while the microphone is moving according to the keyframes. Let us hide this little annoying relationship line by disabling this option. But we have a problem. Sometimes you may notice that the shape of the wire is getting distorted, or getting flattened, because Blender is still treating it like a simple cloth material. We can rectify this by using some pressure value. This will make the wire slightly inflated, and it will then maintain its original shape. First, we have to delete the bakes. Now, enable the pressure option. And in the pressure field, we'll use a small value, like 0.1. Then enable this custom volume option, and in the target volume, we'll use 0.1 as well. Now bake it again for the final time. Once complete, let us go to frame number 1, to actually see what is happening in the beginning. The wire falls down directly on the floor, but we are hiding this part of the animation from the viewers. So we'll start our animation from frame number 50. And as a result, the animation will start from this rest condition. Let us now run it and watch. So the animation part looks good, and this time, the shape of the wire is also not distorted. If the wire becomes unstable, verify the pressure values and the friction values that you have used. Let us take a look from another angle. This way, you can also create a rope animation, but a rope will be little more thicker than this wire, and the texture will be different. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.